Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Uh, today we'll be talking about studying effectively. You might have heard about this phrase, right? Study smart, not hard, stuff like that. But uh, you know, something that's ironic is that a lot of you know schools teach us subjects, like they'll teach physics, they'll teach chemistry, they'll teach maths, but very few people actually teach you how to study. Like, is there a particular method to study? What are the you know diff what are the what's the optimum method of revising? When should you study? You know is sleep important, uh, how to get rid of distractions, and how to focus on your studies, things like that. So recently, Disha Publications sent me over this book called Topper Study Hacks. Initially, I thought, hey, it'll be some lame book about Topper interview, but no, actually, I read a couple of sections of this book, and it's pretty useful. So if you're someone who's confused about, hey, what should I study? How should I study? You know, which topics to focus on, how to prioritize things, and how to get rid of mobile phone distraction, then do give read to this book. It's pretty cool. You can check it out on Amazon, see a preview, and if you like it, then uh, go go ahead and give it a shot. Today, I'll just be uh, telling you about my experiences. And as a person who has given hundreds of exams until now, I have a bit of experience about exams. And also remember that I'm not a topper. I'm just here sharing my experiences and experiences of hundreds of my other friends. And also I'll be sharing a few tips that I found in this particular book. Now something that we really neglect during preparation is sleep. Now five years back, my friend's parents used to be like, Hey, my son is reading at 5 o'clock. And then, you know, other parents used to be like, Oh, wow, how cool is this kid? Uh, and now when I think about it, I'm like, hey, is that kid abnormal? Why is he waking up at 5 a.m. and studying? And to be honest, it's not necessary for all of y'all to wake up at 5 and study. Sleep for 8 hours peacefully and later on you can, uh, you know, start studying. Do not mess up your sleep schedule just for the sake of, you know, waking up really early and studying. If that's what works for you, then it's totally fine. But just because others are doing it, do not imitate it, right? See, because studying is something that's very personalized. Take care. Every child's study pattern is different. I my study pattern isn't the same as my sister's, right? So everyone is different, and you need to figure out your own way. If you're waking up at waking up at five every day, if your sleep schedule is messed up, if you're just sleeping like five six hours, then it's a very unhealthy practice, and it would lead to you having you know lesser retention. It'll uh, you know make you dis it'll get you distracted really fast. And you do not want that to happen. So sleep eight to nine hours peacefully and then start studying. It's gonna have a huge impact. The next one is setting realistic goals. Now remember, motivation is a very, very important part of you know studying for any exam. Uh, because if you are like, hey, today I'll study nine hours, complete the portion, and then I'm done for the day. But then you know, two, three hours down the line you realize, hey, I cannot complete the portion and then you get demotivated, then you're like, oh, I can't study for the exam, I'm gonna fail, then all these negative thoughts start coming in. Instead of that, what you can do is just study one hour every day for nine days continuously. This way you can even go out and play, you can do whatever things you like to do, and at the same time study. And when you study for like nine days continuously, it gives you a uh, consistency which helps you remember better. So consistency is the key to it. Uh, now, I'm, I'm not a topper as I've said before, but I've noticed that whenever I'm consistent in studying a particular subject, uh, like whenever I start early, uh, I'm usually better at it. The very first issue is distractions. Now, I'll tell you a major source of distraction, right? Uh, it happens when you buy five books for just one subject. And this is a mistake that I have committed earlier. In my 12th grade, I used to have like four or five books for just one single inorganic chemistry. This creates a lot of confusion. You're like, hey, is chapter is book se padu, is book se padu? And that's gonna create a lot of clutter in your mind and it'll distract you a lot. So uh, my suggestion would be stick to one book. Could be a coaching material, could could be whatever it is. In my college life it's just like we just have one single textbook. I just stick to that and I make sure that I at least finish that particular one book and that'll help you uh, you know um, stay focused on just one book and also not get stressed that there are so many other options available. So focus on just one book. Another major source of distraction is something called a mobile phone. Now I know mobile phone can be a huge distraction. So my suggestion to you would be uh, do not touch your mobile phone for the first one hour after you wake up. Uh, like right now I'm learning Node.js. 
So in your case, you might be learning chemistry or maths. Once you wake up, just do not touch your phone for the first one hour. Be like, hey, uh, I'm gonna learn now because once you wake up, that's the time your brain is the most active. That's when you are able to capture and you know learn more. So uh, right after you wake up, start learning. And uh, once you are like, done with your learning part after that you can reward yourself by giving you giving i mean using a phone so use your phone as a reward mechanism rather than as a distraction also using a calendar can help you a lot you can go to google calendar set up a lot of tasks and set up different timings for different you know uh, subjects that you want to study this way you can like organize things a lot and this might seem very simple but just try doing it guys it'll help you a lot so use Google Calendar, structure your entire day, know when to take breaks, know when to study and that will make things way easier for you and way less stressful as well. Uh, also another major uh, you know, part of focus is that a lot of people say, hey, the moment I get to studying, I get bored uh, within the first 30 seconds. That happens because you're trying to study something that's very incomprehensible or that could samaj mein nahi aara because it's very complex. Make sure that you take gradual steps while studying. So make sure your foundations are strong and once your foundations are strong, you, uh, you know, go up the curve of difficulty. Do not start from the top. Do not start solving the hardest questions out there. This is a very generic advice, but uh, I mean, it's quite useful. Start from the easy questions, start from the foundations. If you, found, if you find the foundations also tougher, then go lower, see what the basics are and then move up. Uh, that way you'll uh, obviously be happier because you won't be stressing over and being like hey I'm not able to solve this question uh, and at the same time uh, you'll not be wasting your time by getting distracted by a lot of uh, you know other difficult questions so do a gradual uh, you know solving approach another thing is note taking now uh, especially in, especially in college and coachings note taking plays an important role right like in my college for certain lectures you'll have to take notes no matter what because uh, it's it's very critical. Without taking notes, you'll forget it immediately once you get to your room. And once you forget it, you won't be able to give your exams properly. Uh, right now, my classes are gonna be online, so I'll make sure that I take notes. Uh, now, coming to the part of notes, there are different ways of taking notes. Uh, earlier, I used to you know just put an asterisk mark and write stuff. But uh, recently, I found out about something called the Cornell method of taking notes. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it. That's all for this video. Uh, if you want to know about more studying hacks, then uh, do get this book. The link is given in the description down below. And uh, it's called Topper Study Hacks by Disha Publications. So thanks Disha for sending this over and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.